இப்பொழுது நம்முடன் நாம் இப்பொழுது எல்லோரும் காத்து கொண்டிருக்கிறோம் அருள் திரு மகாராஜ் அவர்கள் ஸ்ரீகிருஷ்ண ஜென்மாஷ்டமியின் முக்கியத்தை பற்றி உரையாற்றுவார் on behalf of the temple sri jagannath mandir temple management council to offer garland to our solinas bhakti vigna nashin swami maharaj innum nerathai namadam seyamal naan shriman rasaparayana prabhu avargalai maharaj avargalukku maalai anivikka varaveerkindren hari krishna maharaj swagatham maharaj swagatham i am going to offer my garland also ஜனாஷ்லாக்கா சோரன்மிதன்யனாஸ்மைஸ்ரீகுரவேநமஸ்தேவாணி பிரச்சாரிணே நிர்விசேஷிபிஷ்ணவேபிஷ்ணவேபிஷ்ணவேபிஷ்ணவேபிஷ்ணவேபிஷ்ணவேபிஷ்ணவேபிஷ்ணவேபிஷ்ணவே
On this occasion, when Mother Bhumi came to Lord Brahma, appealing for something to be done about this situation, Lord Brahma then approached Lord Vishnu, who resides in the universe on an island in the middle of, of in the middle of the milk ocean and Swetadvi. So Lord Lord Brahma could communicate with Lord Vishnu by meditation. Just like we communicate with our mobile phones, so Lord Brahma, he could do it all simply by meditation. And he was able to take a message from Lord Vishnu, and Lord Vishnu instructed all the demigods that they should take birth in the families connected with the Yadu dynasty. And that very soon he would also come himself. He would also incarnate himself in this world, in the Yadu dynasty. Now, the Yadus were known for their religiosity, for being very pious and for being great devotees of Lord Vishnu. So it was appropriate that the Lord would appear in their fun in their dynasty. So Mother Bhumi was very, well at least somewhat pacified to understand that the Lord was aware of her plight and that soon something was going to be done to adjust for the situation. Of course, uh, the Lord is going to appear on the planet, just like we're planning to celebrate tomorrow the occasion, the anniversary of the appearance of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna comes on the, we call it the Janmastami, Astami meaning the eighth day of the moon. So 5,000 years ago, when Lord Krishna appeared on this planet, Lord Krishna came on the eighth day, but although it was the eighth day, it was a full moon. Now, usually the moon is not full on the eighth day. There's 14 days usually before the moon is full. It would be Chaturdasi. <coughs> However, the Acharyas explained to us that the moon was full because the moon was rejoicing that Lord Krishna had chosen to appear in the dynasty which comes down from him. As we said, Lord Rama came in the Surya Vamsa, but Lord Krishna comes in the Soma Vamsa. So the moon was very happy. And to show his uh, pleasure, he appeared in a, as a full moon that night. Srimad Bhagavatam also describes that the particular day in which Lord Krishna appeared, well, of course it was a night, in the stroke of midnight when Lord Krishna appeared, that, it, that everything was perfect arrangement. All the different planets were in very auspicious positions and auspicious constellations like Rohini and stars like Ashwini, they were all visible and everything was very auspicious. Those persons who are versed in the science of astrology, they can produce the chart, just like for all of us, you know, we can show our birth chart, we can have our birth chart drawn up and we can understand some of our different characteristic traits from the birth chart. 
So similarly, at the time of Lord Krishna's appearance, if we were to drop the birth chart of the appearance of Lord Krishna, then it shows that actually only the Supreme Personality of Godhead could appear at such a time. Everything was so perfect, everything was completely auspicious. So it was in this way that Lord Krishna advented into this world. And we're told from the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna himself states the reason for his coming into the world. Parichanaya sadhunam vinas chaya chaduskritam dharma samstarpanartaya sambhavami yuge yuge. In order to give pleasure to the pious, and annihilate the miscreants, as well as establish the principles of religion, I invent myself, millennium after millennium. So there are a few things which we want to understand about the appearance of Lord Krishna. First of all, we want to appreciate that when Lord Krishna came into this world 5,000 years ago, he was not just simply the avatar of Vishnu. He was not just simply an avatar of sometimes more trouble than it's worth. So when Lord Krishna comes into this world, he was not just simply an avatar of Lord Vishnu, but he was actually the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Swayam Bhagavan, Lord Sri Krishna himself. As we know from Srimad Bhagavatam, in the third chapter of the first canto, when Sukadeva Goswami or Sutta Goswami is listing the different incarnations of the Lord, then he mentions Ete Chamsa Kalapumsa Krishna's to Bhagavan Svayam. That Lord Sri Krishna is not just simply an avatar, but he is avatari. He is the source of all the avatars. And that personality of Godhead, that Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna is the personality who appeared in this world 5,000 years ago. So he was complete in all of his opulences. Of course, we cannot appreciate his completeness. We are the conditioned souls. We have limited senses. Our understanding is limited. But we can understand with scriptural references and with the guidance of the Acharyas, we can understand that this Lord Sri Krishna is actually Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna. Other millenniums, other ages, different times, then it would be the avatar, it would be the avatar coming from Shirodakshai Vishnu. But the incarnation of the Lord who came 5,000 years ago was the Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna. And he comes to, put, to establish the religious principles and to give pleasure to his devotees. He does not personally need to come just to establish the religious principle. And he does not need to come to kill the demons, but it is only he who can give that pleasure to his unalloyed devotees. And Lord Krishna performed his pastimes like that for the pleasure of his devotees. Just like we know how Lord Krishna danced the Rasa Lila to give pleasure for all of his devotees. So we want to appreciate that Lord Sri Krishna coming to this world 
is the Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna. We want to also appreciate that when the Lord came into this world, he, he doesn't just come as the son of Vasudev and Devaki, but he is actually the son of Nanda and Yashoda. This is pointed out also to us at great length by acharyas like Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, and he gives a lot of scriptural evidence to establish that when Krishna appeared in this world 5,000 years ago, he actually came as the son of Nanda and Yashoda. So who was this child who appears to Vasudev and Devaki? This, that is Vasudev Krishna. But the child who appears to Nanda and Yashoda, that is Shyamsundar Krishna. Vasudev Krishna is the forearm form of Lord Krishna. We know at the time of Lord Krishna's appearance in the prison house of Kamsa, the Lord appeared fully dressed and decorated with all ornaments in his forearm form, carrying the symbols of Vishnu, the conch shell, the club, the lotus, and the Sudarshan chakra. And seeing this form, Vasudev and Devaki offered their prayers to the Lord. Srimad Bhagavatam describes how Vasudev, seeing the Lord appear mentally, he arranged he gave cows in charity, and it mentions that he gave ten th within his mind, he arranged 10,000 cows to be given in charity to qualified brahmanas in honor of the birth of his son. And then Vasudev and Devaki, they offered their prayers to the Supreme Lord. And they described also his different activities. Mother Devaki mentions, she describes how the Lord had come previously as their son. Because Vasudev and Devaki in their previous lives, they had done great austerities. That previously they were Sutapa and Prishni. And as Sutapa and Prishni, they underwent great austerities for a thousand years of the demigods, eating only dry leaves that fell from the tree in order to get the Lord as their child. So they got the benediction to have the Lord as their child. The first incarnation was Prishni Garba, who appeared to Sutapa and Prishni as their child. Then the second incarnation was when Prishni and Sutapa came as Aditi and Kashyapa. And as Aditi and Kashyapa, the Lord came as Vanmanadev or Upendra. He appeared as their child. And now for the third incarnation, the Lord has come. Krishna and Sutapa have become Vasudev and Devaki, and the Lord has appeared, Lord Vasudev Krishna, the forearm form of Lord Krishna. Vasudev and Devaki were able to receive the Lord as their son, but Devaki, Mother Devaki was worried for the safety of her child, because she had already seen six of her sons killed by the evil king Kamsa, who was like a brother to Devaki. Kamsa was threatened. He had heard the omen that the eighth child of Vasudev and Devaki will kill you. So when Kamsa heard this omen, at first he was going to kill Devaki. But Vasudev was an expert politician and he was able to plead to Kamsa. He spoke philosophically first of all, but the philosophy was not able to convince Kamsa. 
But then Vasudev made a promise to Kamsa that I will bring the children, that whenever my wife give, gives birth to children, I will bring the children to you. So on the basis of Vasudev's own honesty, Kamsa accepted to allow, to spare the life of Devaki. And then, one after another, Vasudev and Devaki had children, but Kamsa, and they presented to Kamsa. At first, Kamsa didn't want to do anything. He thought, it's okay, this child is not going to give any trouble to me. This is just the first child. It's the eighth child I have to worry about. So Kamsa was not inclined to kill any of the children until the eighth one came. But Narada Muni came and he told Kamsa, you should be careful that the demigods are all taking birth in the line of the Yadu dynasty. Kam Vasudev and Devaki were in that line of the Yadu dynasty. And they're coming, they're going to come, they're going to help to kill you and all the demonic kings who support you. So when Kamsa heard this, then he came and he got the sons of Devaki, and one after another, he had them killed. However, seventh child was very special. Seventh child was Lord Balaram. Lord Balaram, who was, had come with an, an ex, a plenary portion of Sankarshan, he had appeared in the womb of Devaki. So in the pastimes of Lord Rama, uh, we see Lakshman as the younger brother. But in the pastimes of Lord Krishna, Balaram is the older brother. And it's pointed out that Lord Balaram came as the older brother because he knew that if he came as the younger brother, Previously, in the pastimes of Lord Ram, there was so much difficulty there trying to serve the older brother. Because the older brother's in charge, he's the boss. So he would give the orders, the instructions to the younger brother. So it was difficult being the younger brother. Lakshman would want to make arrangements for the comfort of Sita and Ram, and Lord Ram would refuse. Lord Rama would say, no. This is the forest. We've come here to do austerity. Don't give me all these comforts. So it was very disturbing for Lakshman. So in the next incarnation, he came as the older brother. And as the older brother, Lord Balaram, he's able to offer all kinds of arrangements and to serve Lord Krishna in all different ways. And one of the ways in which he served Lord Krishna was before Lord Krishna appeared in the womb of Devaki, Lord Balaram came as the seventh child. And he arranged to clean the womb, to make the womb suitable for the appearance of Lord Krishna. And he even left a bed in the womb of Devaki. That bed is at the expansion of Ananta Shesha, who appears there in the form of a bed, for the service of Lord Krishna. Because Lord Balaram knows Lord Krishna is going to come here. I want him to be comfortable. So he arranged a transcendental bed to be left within the womb of Devaki so that Lord Krishna, when he came there, would not, be, would not experience any inconvenience. But then it was arranged that Lord Balaram would not take birth from the womb of Devaki. Because Kamsa is going to kill all the children she gives birth to. So Lord Balaram did not take birth from the womb of Devaki. He spent some months there in the womb of Devaki, but then with the help of Yoga Maya, he was transferred to the womb of Rohini. Rohini was another wife of Vasudev, and she was staying in the home of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. Vasudev had sent Rohini there for her own safety because he knew that Kamsa is very demonic and he's giving, he's persecuting so many people. 
So for the safety of that wife, Vasudev had several wives. He told Rohini, you go and stay in Gokul at the home of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. You will be safe there. So Lord Balaram was transferred to the womb of Rohini. And he's in the womb of Rohini for several months before taking birth. So about 14 months Lord Balaram spent in, first in the womb of Devaki and then in the womb of Rohini and then he takes birth. We celebrated Balaram Purnima just some eight days before Janmashtami, right? The Purnima and then the Astami. So there's eight days between the appearance of Lord Balaram and the appearance of Lord Krishna. So it's very convenient. The two brothers can have both there in the home of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda and they can grow up together. So I was describing that actually Krishna is not just simply the son of Vasudeva and Devaki. That was Vasudeva Krishna. So at the request of Devaki, she requested Vasudeva Krishna to take the form of a child. That she thought it would be very embarrassing, it would be very uncomfortable if people know that you appeared in the form of Lord Vishnu. What kind of couple is it who have a child with four arms? We never heard it. We never saw anybody with a child with four arms. So they requested this form of Vasudeva Krishna to take the form of a child. And then, by the help of Yoga Maya, Nanda Maharaj could bring that child out of the prison house of Kamsa. Everyone was in slumber, everyone was in a state of mystic sleep and Vas uh, Vasudev could bring the child out from the prison house, he could cross the Yamuna river and come to the home of Nanda Maharaj. And in the home of Nanda Maharaj everyone was also asleep there. But Mother Yashoda had given birth to two children. One was the boy and one was a girl. The girl was the younger one. The child is Shamsundar Krishna. So when Vasudev brought over this Vasudev Krishna, this Vasudev Krishna form entered into the Shamsundar form of Krishna and they became one child. Shamsundar Krishna possesses all the other forms, all the subordinate forms of Lord Krishna. All the, uh, everything comes from Krishna, and that original form is the Shamsundar Krishna. So the Vasudev form entered into the Shamsundar form, became one, and then Vasudev took the girl who had been born to Mother Yashoda. And that girl is actually Yoga Maya. And then as, he, as he's, he's taking her, but when he brings her back to the prison house of Kamsa, then she becomes Mahamaya. Because Kamsa is going to come. When he heard that a child had been born, Kamsa came and he immediately wanted to try to kill that child. So that, that form rose up in the sky, this is Mahamaya. She rose up into the sky and showed herself as a, the, a deity, worshipable deity. So Kamsa saw he could not actually harm this child. This was actually a, a demigod who had appeared to him. And that deity is, it said it's gone to the, the Vinj Vinja Hills and is worshipped there in the Vinja Hills. So this was all happening at the appearance of Lord Krishna. With the appearance of Lord Krishna, uh, Shamsundar Krishna has come as a child of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. Because they are always Krishna's parents. 
Vasudevan Devaki, they got the blessing from Krishna that they could give birth to the Lord as their child, but they could not enjoy his pastimes. Enjoying his pastimes, that is, the childhood pastimes are only for Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. They are the ones who are allowed that privilege. Mother Devaki, she could give birth to the Lord, but the Lord never even had the chance to drink her milk. It, it, it is said later on, later on after Lord Krishna has grown up a bit and then he comes back to Mathura and Kamsa arranges the wrestling match. So then Lord Krishna deals with the wrestlers and then he kills King Kamsa. And after that, then he frees Vasudeva and Devaki from the prison house which they had been in. And Vasudeva and Devaki, they want that their son should get some education. So they sent him to Sandipani Muni's ashram for their education. And when they came back after their education, then Devaki heard how Sandipani Muni's son had been brought back from death. Because Lord Krishna and ba Lord Balaram were there in Sandipani Muni's ashram, so after their training, after their education, they wanted to give some Guru Dakshin to Sandipani Muni. So Sandipani Muni understood their very unique abilities. He told them that previously I lost my son, that he drowned at the, at the beach. So he asked Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, can you bring back my son from death? So for Lord Krishna and Balaram, this is not a problem. They can do that. If someone is actually God, they can bring someone back from death. And Krishna did this not only just for Sandipani Muni, he's going to do it several other times. So Krishna and Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram went to the ocean, they went there, they couldn't find. They couldn't find him there. But then they searched again. And then they found him, I think it, it was in the, some other planet, or anyway, they brought him back and, and gave him to Sandipani Muni. And when Devaki heard this, then she requested Lord Krishna that, you know, I heard you brought your guru's son back from death. Can you bring back your six brothers? Because... Devaki was lamenting that her six sons had all been killed by Kamsa. So she thought, since Krishna is so powerful, let him bring back the six sons who've been killed by Kamsa. So Lord Krishna, yeah, he did it. Uh, he went and he found them at Sutala Loka, where Bali Maharaj was residing. The, actually, it's Bali Maharaj's residence there, and the six sons who'd been killed by Kamsa were all there. And Lord Krishna brought them back to Mother Devaki. Now, Mother Devaki, she, when she, was, when she was released from prison, she was so happy that she was able to give some breast milk to Krishna, because for a long time she had not had the opportunity to have that pleasure of mothering her son, Krishna. She was thinking this Krishna, although he was actually the son of Nanda Maharaj, she was thinking this is my son. So she fed her breast milk to Lord Krishna. And then Lord Krishna brought the six sons back from Sutala Loka. And then she also fed her breast milk to them. So they were taking the prasad of Lord Krishna because Lord Krishna had already taken the breast milk from Devaki, so it was now prasadam. So the six sons, they all came, they also drank the milk from Devaki's breast 
and after they drank the milk from Devaki's breast, then they were all purified and they could go back to the heavenly planets. Because these six sons were actually the sons of Marichi, who had been cursed. They had been cursed. They had actually a couple of curses. First of all, the sons of Marichi, they were cursed. They had to take birth in the family of Hiranyakashipu. And they were the sons of Kalanemi. However, when they were the sons of Kalanemi, they worshipped Lord Brahma. And their purpose in worshipping Lord Brahma was that they should not be killed by any demigod. So it happened that Haranyakashipu found out how these six sons had all been worshipping Haranyakashipu. And they had all been worshipping Lord Brahma independently of him. And Haranyakashipu did not like this at all. He was very angry that you, you want to be independent of me, you worship Lord Brahma independent of me without my direction. He said, you think you're so smart, you, want, you think you can avoid death in this way? He said, therefore let me tell you, in the future you will take birth as the sons of Devaki and you will be killed by your father. And that's what happened. Kalanemi, who had been their father, became Kamsa. And Kamsa comes and he kills the six sons of Devaki. Kamsa, of course, did not know that these were originally his, his sons. But this is how the pastime is explained. So just understand the nature of this material world all the killing which is going on. So Lord Krishna has come, he has appeared in this world to bring us to the transcendental platform and to show us the pastimes of Vrindavan. It Shamsundar Krishna who performs the pastimes in Vraja. The killing of the demons, that's done by Vasudev Krishna. But the actual giving of pleasure to his devotees, that is only Shamsundar Krishna who can give that pleasure to his devotees. So Lord Krishna comes and he enacts his pastimes with his devotees and we see Lord Krishna with all the cowherd boys playing in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj and as they grow up they go into the forest every day bringing the calves. They would take the calves and cows into the forest and Lord Krishna would enjoy the company of all these cowherd boys. And who are these cowherd boys? Of course they are all very, very great souls who have performed pious activities over many, many lifetimes. And now they are able to enjoy the intimate dealing with Lord Krishna in the forests of Vrindavan. Playing games, riding on each other's back, fighting and wrestling with each other. They're able to see Krishna. Every day Lord Krishna would simply wake up in the morning and after bathing and dressing, then he would call the cowherd boys and they would all come, they would all assemble, they would all be eager to go with Lord Krishna into the forests of Vrindavan and they would enjoy sporting there together. And Lord Krishna would also go in the night. In the day he would go with the cowherd boys and at night secretly he would go with the gopis and they would have Rasa Leela together in the forests of Vrindavan. In this way Lord Krishna would be giving the greatest pleasure to his devotees. Lord Krishna's pastimes are all full of bliss, not just only for the gopis and the cowherd boys, but for all the residents of Vrindavan. They all love Krishna so much. Of course, Lord Krishna only spends the early part of his 
appearance in this world there, up to the age of, uh, was it 14? And then Lord Krishna will go to Mathura and he will stay in Mathura for some time and then he will go to Dwarka and he will complete his pastimes in Dwarka. But it is Vrindavan which is the perfection of Lord Krishna's pastimes. We say Krishna is perfect in Dwarka, he's more perfect in Mathura and he is most perfect in Vrindavan. In Dwarka, he is also Krishna, but actually that is Vasudev Krishna. Again, the Shamsundar Krishna is the Krishna in Vrindavan. He stays in Vrindavan. And what happens when Krishna leaves Vrindavan? Shamsundar Krishna hides himself in the hearts of the gopis. He remains in Vrindavan, but he remains hidden in the hearts of the gopis. So this is the wonder of Lord Krishna's pastimes. Lord Krishna appears in this world to give pleasure to all of the devotees. And as devotees, we want to relish hearing about topics of Krishna. So in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Sukadeva Goswami begins the tenth canto speaking about the pastimes of Lord Krishna and he describes there are some people who are not able to hear the pastimes of Krishna. He explains we have to hear the pastimes of Krishna from the devotees. Nivrita tasher upagiya manach bevoh shadach srotram manobhirama kadutama sloka gnanuna pumam virajeta vina pashugna. Pashugna means the killer of the animals. Somebody who is a killer of his own self or a killer of animals. They are not qualified to hear the pastimes of Krishna they will never be able to understand. And who is able to speak on the pastimes of Krishna? Those who are nivritta tashya, who are freed of all material activities. They have no business with the material world. They have dedicated themselves fully to the service of Lord Krishna. This is the right person to deliver the message of Krishna. So the, those who are killers of the, their own self, those who like commit suicide or who kill the cow, then they have no qualification to hear. They can never understand the topics of Krishna. And that, this means killers, killer of, a killer of the self are those persons who are dedicated to material pleasure. Their interest is simply artha and kama. They are only thinking about economic development and sense gratification and maybe even moksha, liberation. But they have no concern to cultivate the mood of devotion. They have no interest in surrender to Krishna. So they can never benefit, they never can appreciate the topics of Krishna. Even though people may come and sit and they may hear about Krishna, but they do not get the real benefit of hearing topics of Krishna because there's so much identifying with the material body and the senses. Their interest is just simply material life. They have not understood the real nature of the soul. This has to be awakened by hearing the holy name of Lord Krishna, by chanting the glories of the Lord, and by hearing from scriptures like Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. 
we have to take to the process of bhakti yoga in order to understand Krishna. There is no other way. People have some sentimental attraction to Krishna and they think Krishna is a cowherd boy and he enjoys with the young girls and they want to imitate. That is the most sinful thing they can do when people try to imitate Lord Krishna. When people think of Krishna as an ordinary person, it is very offensive. Just like if the head of the state, if the Prime Minister of Malaysia is to come, and if we think of him just like an ordinary person, it is not very proper. He will not be very much pleased. And similarly, people, if people think of Lord Krishna as just simply an ordinary person, and if we minimize his position, we think all the demigods are just the same as Lord Krishna, he's just one of the gods. They think, oh, Krishna, Shiva, Brahma, Ganesh, all are one, it's all the same. This is offensive. This is not true. It's not supported by evidence of the scriptures. So we have to understand clearly what is the position of Lord Krishna and why is this day of Janmastami so important. It is our opportunity to understand more the pastimes of Lord Krishna and Lord Krishna's purpose in coming into this world. It's an opportunity for all of us to awaken the bhakti which is within all of us. Bhakti is in everyone's heart. It has to be awakened by hearing. So Janmastami is an opportunity for all of us to engage in this hearing process, cleansing the heart and awakening our real consciousness of Krishna. So we will stop here now and we will ask if there's any questions. Hare Krishna Maharaj. <clears throat> uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, so um, with your permission, uh, we have to be making some announcements for the tomorrow function, at the after tomorrow function, and then. Uh, Will be, I will have a Arati Maharaj for all the devotees to view them. Oh, yes, right. So, with your permission, Maharaj, I will carry on. Okay, Prabhu, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, on behalf of the temple